Hey there gang, Patrick King here and I want to welcome you back to another coffee conversation. Uh, I'm pretty excited about going to be doing uh, these a little bit more regularly uh, than what I've done. So you can look for these uh, to be happening probably about once a month or so. Uh, and topics are going to be basically chosen by you guys. So as we go along, if you have any topics that you'd like to see included or hear included as part of our coffee conversations, um, please feel free to join them in, enter them into the comment section and that sort of thing. So um, yeah, just a little fun note. Uh, I was given a, a gift recently at a clinic by a student of mine, Brenda. She gave me actually a packet of coffee. She knew that I had this coffee conversation coming up and uh, so she gave me a packet of coffee here, a French roast coffee from the Grind Coffee House in Manistique, Michigan. And uh, the Grind has a pretty interesting story that Brenda shared with me. Uh, it's run, uh, built, run, uh, the whole deal by, if I understand it right, by the um, high school students uh, as part of their business education. Uh, and I guess the um, tech students joined in for uh, building or, or renovating the, uh, the location and things like that. So pretty cool, pretty cool story as she was sharing it with me. And of course, I don't remember the whole story, but um, it, it looks like... Uh, yeah, it looks like a pretty neat deal. So that's the Grind Coffee House in Manistique, Michigan. Now, unfortunately, uh, I'm not able to sample it yet. Uh, I think that's a pretty cool idea, and I do look forward to sampling it, but I'm in a hotel right now uh, that just has a little individual coffee maker coffee deal. So um, what I'm working at right now is uh, Starbucks coffee served in a packet from the Sheraton Hotel. So I am looking forward, though, to... Uh, to try in this coffee here as soon as I get the chance. <clears throat> so anyway, so uh, today we want to talk a little bit about trailer loading. Uh, if you're joining in here, if you're listening, uh, let me know what are you drinking? Are you joining me for a cup of coffee or tea or I don't know, depending on where you are in the country, maybe it's or in the world, maybe it's a glass of wine or something. I don't know. Let me know what you got. But uh, we want to talk about trailer loading today. That's something that I get a lot of questions on, uh, the trailer loading challenges that people have, trailer loading issues, anxieties, um, refusals, you name it. Um, but I thought it'd be pretty important and useful to start out talking a little bit about our horse's psychology. Before we get into the idea of trailer loading, I think it's important that we understand the psychology of our horse and how he might be viewing trailer loading and how we might be able to view it to help him out with that idea. So if we think about horses uh, from the psychological perspective, they are, of course, as we all know, they're prey animals, right? Prey animal uh, responses to typical things like hiding in or going into caves, being shoved into caves, or even worse, being shoved into a tin can, right? Uh, you can imagine the claustrophobia that that would bring up. The prey animal, typically the prey animal response is flight, right? Uh, with our horses, we know, we, we talk all the time about the fight or flight response, right? And really there's a little more to it than that. We've got fight, flight, freeze, fidget, and sometimes faint. Um, thankfully, we don't see that often, the fainting part. It's kind of scary when you do see it, but... Um, so if we think about the prey animal's response, then when we look at our horses and the resistances that they show in the trailer or the anxieties that they show in the trailer, it's pretty common to see just about all of those things come up when we have a challenge with our trailer loading. And all of that really is about self-preservation. We need to understand the horse's brain and how that works and our own and how that works as well. And in the in the brain we would talk about the horse being, you know, in the in the right side of his mind, like we talk about ourselves, you know, I'm not in the right mind to think about this thing or you know, I was in a bad state of mind when I said this thing or whatever. Um, we've got to think about our horses in that same way. The brain works, the nervous system works basically in either the sympathetic dominant way or the parasympathetic dominant way. 
And uh, I don't want to get too sciencey about it, although I like to nerd out about it. Those of you who know me know that. Um, but, you know, we've got to think about what state of mind our horse is in and what state of mind we're in when it comes to asking anything of our horse and trying to teach him anything. Um, because, basically, the sympathetic dominant state of the nervous system uh, is focused on survival. All right. Um, sympathetic dominant state is one where we would see anxiety living, where we would see fear living, where we would see tension living. Now, the parasympathetic side is where we would see relaxation. It's where we would see curiosity. Uh, it's where learning happens. Um, Think about, think about what happens when we rush or pressure or push a horse in a situation where they're not very comfortable. Usually that's met with more resistance, right? That's because for any prey animal particularly, as soon as you start to push, as soon as you start to rush, then you're going to activate the sympathetic dominant state of the nervous system, <clears throat> thereby making learning pretty much impossible in that point uh, until we can get the horse transferred over into that other state, the parasympathetic state, again where learning can happen. Uh, it's important to understand that there's a difference between learning and association. Learning happens through mindful thought. Association, we could say association kind of happens more by accident. Uh, you see your friends or you hear your friends talk about maybe maybe not your friends, maybe you've heard somebody, I'm sure you have, uh, talk about, oh, my horse is scared of, uh, I don't know, tall men in blue hats, right? Like, that's not something you teach a horse to be scared of, tall men in blue hats. And maybe it's not that situation, but I think you can, I think you can follow where I'm going with that. And that would be a basic association, where something happened uh, in the horse's life, in the horse's environment, and in that moment, the brain associated a tall person in a blue hat. Uh, it, it's kind of like when you're, uh, say you're walking in a shopping mall or something, and you smell a candle, you get a whiff of a candle or something baking in a cookie shop or something like that, and uh, immediately it brings you back to a memory that you have. Maybe you were a young child uh, in the family kitchen at Christmas and people were arguing and now um, that, that triggers that memory and it triggers kind of a state change in you, right? Um, to begin with, you were fine, you were happy, you were whatever. Um, you get that smell of that candle or that cookie or that whatever, and now suddenly you're, you know, you're a little sad, you're a little upset. And it was it's not because of a learning situation. That's association, and that's the way our brain works for association. And the horse's brain is going to work the same way. We can't control necessarily what it latches onto in that moment that causes the association, and that's what can make it really tricky. And association is... Um, oftentimes a lot more difficult to over-train uh, than just bad training in the first place. So that's something we want to be careful of. Now, when the horse changes from this sympathetic to the parasympathetic state, there's changes that we see take place. We'll see things like yawning, uh, blinking the eyes, the ears will tend to get floppy, uh, you might see him shake his head or his whole body like as if he just got up to, from rolling uh, in the dirt or in the, the sand. Um, oftentimes they'll reach their face down and or reach their head down and rub their face on their lower leg, things like that. Um, those are signals to us. Um, we refer to them as, as signs of releases of tension or releasing from the sympathetic to the parasympathetic side of the nervous system. Uh, in humans, I've heard it referred to as the epinephrine to norepinephrine response. Um, so basically, if you could imagine yourself driving in a car, uh, driving down the highway, and you see in your rearview mirror, you know, blue lights flashing, a police officer behind you. Um, you see those flashing in your rearview mirror, you can't even really help it. You get a little bit tense, right? You get tight in your shoulders, your palms might start sweating, you kind of get a dry mouth. Uh, you start 
taking shorter breaths. Uh, you know, that's that's a very typical response there. Uh, that has been actually in the human uh, an association rather than a learned behavior. So that's similar to some of our trailer loading issues. Uh, but let's say the police officer then flies around you. He's chasing after somebody else. Uh, he just happened to be behind you in that moment in his journey to go where he was headed. What typically happens with us, and, and if you're listening along, you probably already did it. There's a, there's an exhale. Your hands soften your grip on the steering wheel. You start breathing deeper again. You relax down into the seat. Um, that's that change, right? The changes happen in us just like they happen in our horse. Um, and if you look at behavioral science for any animal, dogs, humans, um, anything, you'll see these changes that take place. And that's what we refer to, that's what I've heard referred to um, in human psychology as the epinephrine to norepinephrine response. So that's us going through those releases and r letting go of tension. But it's really important that <clears throat> we understand this so that we can start to recognize these things in our horses. Because just as we can see a big release when the horse has switched over into that parasympathetic state where learning and relaxation are going to start to happen, there's changes the other way also. We start to see... Um, breathing changes, right? Breathing gets more shallow or the horse starts to hold their breath. They can hold their breath for several minutes, much, much longer than we can. Um, we'll start to see them get rigid in their movements or, or wide and stiff in their eyes or maybe wrinkles under the eyelids or under the nose uh, might start to take place. The chin might get stiff, things like that. It's important to recognize when those things are taking place because that's the horse if we're listening well enough, that's the horse's body telling us whether or not they're in a learning frame of mind, a learning state of mind. Um, so again, thinking back about the horse as a prey animal, that's really important when we start talking about trailer loading. Um, because we're, we're asking a prey animal to stuff himself into a tin can, right, into a box. Uh, that no self-respecting prey animal in the wild would allow himself to be put into. Uh, so, and then we, we want to think about our psychology a little bit, who we are as a species also, because that's really where we start to see a problem take place. If you think about the human, you know, we're, we're tool users, we're pressure appliers, we're task-oriented, right? Uh, oftentimes we're impatient. We tend to focus on a task oftentimes to the point of a lack of awareness of other things, right? You've seen this, I know, probably not yourself, you'd never do anything like this, but you've probably seen your friends get so task-oriented on asking for something, like we'll take, for instance, trailer loading. You want the horse to load into the trailer, and you're so focused on getting that horse to load into the trailer, you know you want to release every effort that the horse makes, but you're so focused on it, and you're driving that horse, you're pushing that horse, you're pulling that horse, and you don't even notice the moments when he's trying, because we're so close to the idea, kind of a forest for the trees idea. Um, we're so close to the idea, and we're so task-oriented that we tend to miss those other things. Um, that's that, that point with us where we get so focused, we get single-minded to the point where we lack awareness of a lot of the important pieces and that's what makes reading the horse in those situations very challenging for us because we get that single-minded focus. It's really important that we keep a lot more relaxed on our part, right, a lot more aware. That's, that's us in that moment kind of turning into the sympathetic dominant state too, really. Uh, another thing that we tend to be, and you'd recognize this if you were ever at a horse show or a clinic or out on a trail ride or something and you needed to load your horse up, and your horse is presenting a challenge to you, um, you'll notice that we tend to be very anxious or self-conscious when it comes to situations like that. And our anxiety, of course, puts us then into that sympathetic dominant state of our nervous system and, again, cuts down on our awareness and we get task-minded, single-focused, um, the idea of looking foolish in front of our friends or in front of other people really drives a lot of problems when it comes to trailer loading because then we walk into that situation already tense, already anxious, 
and the horse because he's so good at reading that because he's a herd animal he's, he's going to pick up on those things and now he says oh geez I don't know they're they're asking me to come up here and they're pretty nervous about it right so it kind of signals to the horse that they need to be nervous uh, in that situation or at the very least it makes them feel less confident in that situation so that's that's super important to think about if you wanna you wanna see the ugly brought out in a person you watch them with a trailer loading challenge right that's something that uh, the ugliest horsemanship you could imagine tends to come out when we have trailer loading issues and uh, you know it, it's it's frustrating to watch you know it's frustrating to be part of right if, if you're the one where ugly comes out in that situation and and you know there's some people we would say well well you know I just couldn't I couldn't help myself well we could but we were so in our own head in those moments that it, it becomes rather difficult interesting we could change our behavior but we're so in our head it's difficult to change our behavior kind of sounds like a horse struggling to load in the trailer doesn't it <laughs> so you know if we think about it the brain works the way the brain works whether you're in the human body or in the horse body right those challenges still come up uh, we see a lot of times in trailer loading or we hear a lot of times about the idea of making the wrong thing hard and letting the right thing be easy um, that's something that I think we need to think about. We need to consider how we how we focus on that. You'll see handlers, trainers, riders, your friends, whatever, um, working a horse outside of a trailer. They say, well, I want to make the, the wrong thing hard. So they'll be lunging the piss out of him outside of the trailer. They'll be working him into the ground, uh, really getting him amped up. If you think about that, you're activating the wrong side of his brain when you do that, when you're, when you're putting him in that situation of really getting amped up and anxious. Now, yes, of course, we want the trailer to be potentially more comfortable in those situations, but the idea of making the wrong thing hard, I think humans as a species are too damn good at making the wrong thing, making anything hard, right? I mean, that's generally how it pops up is, is we make everything hard we're so good at making things hard we think we tend to think less about making that right thing easy or making that right thing obvious or making that right thing the most comfortable thing we already know how to make things hard that's that's rarely a problem for us it's the making things easy that we tend to struggle with you hear a lot of times um, this idea it's not about the trailer. That's almost become just a cliche comment now. It's not about the trailer. It's about the relationship you have with your horse. I don't even think it's necessarily, in, often in circumstances, I don't think it's necessarily the relationship you have with the horse. It's the way you relate yourself to that horse, I think. Um, you know, and, and the idea, it's not about the trailer, it's about the relationship. Yeah, that's, that's a, a noble one, right? Um, that's basically saying you need to focus on the way you present yourself to the horse and how you ask the horse for these things that you want, whether it's trailer loading, whether it's crossing a bridge, whether it's you know, asking for a flying lead change, doesn't really matter what it is, it's whatever task we have in the moment there, it's not about the task, it's about the presentation. That's really, I think, what we want to think about. Um, you know, we go back to that idea of learning versus association. You know, if we go back to that analogy of, you know, the way the candle smell or the cookie smell changed your mood because of association, sometimes it is about that damn trailer. If you've struggled enough with a horse in the idea of trailer loading, you can develop an association, your horse can develop an association that the trailer equals ugliness, the trailer equals anxiety, the trailer equals a place where I have to defend myself. And in a situation like that, yes, it absolutely is about the trailer. But probably not in the same way that we think about it right it's about the association that the horse has the negative association that brings up the anxiety that brings up the resistance when it comes to trailer loading we need to 
focus in those moments on changing the association and that can be really hard uh, like like I mentioned earlier changing a negative association is much more difficult even than educating in the first place so if we can help it it's about the way we present ourselves the way we prepare our horse for this question that is trailer loading for this skill that is trailer loading uh, Sometimes that's not possible, right? Sometimes somebody else has put ugly in there, uh, or they've put anxiety or resistance in there, and now we've got to work through it. So many times um, I find myself in situations like that, taking a horse over near the trailer and simply not asking him to go into the trailer, right? Because that's probably the association that he has. Oh, we get near the trailer, oh shit, that door's open, and now, oh man, here comes the ugliness, right? So most of the time I find it's best to just go hang out there for a minute you know and help uh, help the horse kind of switch over into that learning mindset that learning state of mind again we talked about the you know the signals the signs that the horse is dominant in the sympathetic side or the parasympathetic side you know can we recognize that if you lead your horse up to the trailer and 20 yards from the trailer 20 meters from the trailer you start to notice his breathing change or his eyes get a little bit tight or his gait changes listen to the way his feet move in the in the grass or in the gravel as you're leading him to the trailer you know you, if you notice a change there that might be something to to keep in mind right um, we want to try to keep our horses as much as possible in that learning state of mind. Are they going to switch over to that nervous tense state? Yeah, probably. I mean, that's life, right? We switch in and out of that all the time. Uh, the idea, you, you can't keep a horse, you can't keep any brain in the parasympathetic state constantly, you know. Uh, it just doesn't work that way, you know. Life has stress in it. Um, regardless of, of what that stress is or how mild that stress is, the brain's going to switch over. So it's not about keeping the horse in that mindset. It's about how quickly can we bring him back. That's the important part. How quickly can we help him come back to that learning state of mind? And I, I feel like that's the biggest piece that people tend to miss when we're talking about trailer loading, is can we get him back? Can we get him back to that relaxed state of mind or that open uh, state of mind where he's receptive? to what we're trying to ask of him. So trailer loading to me comes down to a very big philosophical kind of a thing where we've got to come into it becoming more aware of how we present ourselves to the horse to keep him in that right state of mind. You know, um, that's, that's super important. And then we talk about incentivizing the trailer, right? Trailer loading to me is a skill. Um, it's just like any other skill, right? It's like tying knots or speaking a different language. Uh, you tend to lose the abilities, and especially if a horse has been anxious about trailer loading. If it's not something that you treat as a skill and you work toward improving it all the time, it's going to backslide. It's going to start to get progressively uh, not so good, uh, you know, progressively worse. And that's something to keep in mind. You know, you're either building the skill or you're letting it deteriorate. Uh, when it comes to incentivizing the trailer, we see riders sometimes, handlers, uh, kind of begging a horse to go into a trailer with a bucket of grain or, you know, cookies or peppermints or grass or whatever. I'm big on using treats when it comes to trailer loading, but it's in a completely different way. And when I talk about treats, it could be hay, it could be, you know, grain, it could be... Um, the end of a good workout session it might be a bucket of water in the trailer uh, but you know I'll, I'll never beg one in with that you know it's not a bribe it's an incentive it's a bonus right so when the horse is loading into the trailer when they've developed relaxation and they go into the trailer relaxed there might be a cookie in there there might be that hay in there or like I said at the end of a good workout um, you know a bucket of water in the trailer Man, that's a really cool thing for the horse to find, and oftentimes that's more meaningful to the horse than the cookie would be anyway, you know. Um, so that's something to think about, is incentivizing your trailer loading. 
Um, you see a lot of times folks will work with their horse on the trailer and they'll load them and they'll unload them, they'll load them and they'll unload them, they send them in and they take them out and they send them in and they take them out. And then they wonder why when they send them in the horse wants to come back out right away. Well, it's because that's the pattern that they set up for that horse, right? When what we really ought to be thinking about is sending that horse in and allowing him to hang out and relax. Again, thinking about those signs that the horse is relaxing. Is he going in and breathing normally, breathing deeply, or is he going in with shallow breaths? Is he standing there holding his breath? Is he tense and tight? Is his tail tight? Uh, or is he blowing out? Is he yawning? Is he relaxed in the trailer? That's so important. Uh, you know, I guess we could talk about our tools, some of the tools we use when we're trailer loading. I always get a kick out of, you know, you go to a horse show and you, you see these folks with the big fluffy halters on their horses because <clears throat> they want to protect their face, you know, from rubbing with the halters. And they've got those fluffy covers they put over the nose band and the cheek pieces and the crown pieces and the, everything. And then they... <laughs> And they put the chain over his nose to take him to the trailer. I always think that's kind of funny. You know, it's it's a shame, really. Um, but I kind of can't help but laugh at that. You know, if, when we see oftentimes a rider will pull out a bunch of extra tools when it comes to loading their horse to the trailer. We'll pull out lunge lines, we'll pull out the fluffy halters, and we'll pull out the chains, and we'll pull out the whips, and we'll pull out, you know, the neighbors and the, you know, the... <laughs> Uh, all sorts of things. There's a fellow I saw years ago giving a trailer loading demonstration. He called in like eight guys and a bunch of corral panels and basically just made a squeeze chute and pushed the horse up into the trailer in front of a few thousand people actually. It was kind of interesting. And, and of course he was talking more about getting the horse ready and getting the horse more comfortable in the trailer and all that stuff. But I don't think it's really practical for most of us to have an extra round corral or a few extra round corral panels and eight extra men hanging out or people hanging out to shove your horse into the trailer every damn time you want to load him. Uh, that's that's not training, that's coercion, right? Um, so we, we, it's funny the tools that people come up with, you know, you got your head bumpers and your your boots and your wraps and all that stuff. And, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those things, right? But what often happens, you put the head bumper on your horse. Well, you already have a negative association to the trailer if you're preparing him with a head bumper, right? Or you wouldn't think it was necessary. And so he's going to pick up on that idea, right? Or you put the boots on him to keep him from banging his legs up, which is, of course, a good idea. Um, I tend to find if we train a horse without those, though, to begin with at least, it helps him to be more mindful of where he's putting his feet. Otherwise he might be putting his feet out of place and he's bumping into kind of soft cushy spots and it feels just as comfortable for him to be in the wrong place as it is for him to be in the right place. Uh, I tend to, if I'm loading a horse, it's probably going to be the same halter you're leading him around in. You know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the idea of a horse having an outfit for loading in the trailer and an outfit for general leading and an outfit for this and an outfit for that because then we end up you know thinking about those other things oh geez he's in the wrong halter oh man now I gotta go put that other halter on him I gotta you know whatever um, I think the horse should be okay loading in whatever you happen to have him in you know even if that's nothing on his head you know if a horse isn't confident going into the trailer it's not really gonna matter what you have on him, it's not going to make him more confident. It's going to help you get him in, maybe, but that's different than him being confident going in the trailer. Uh, with pretty much all the work that I do with a horse on the ground, I've usually got a dressage whip or a bamboo stick for talking, right, for touching the horse's body in certain ways, in certain places, uh, you know, not, not for banging on one or beating on one, but for bringing awareness to the body, I think about it almost like a pointer stick, you know, so if a horse has tension in the back, I can touch the back and help him relax, or if I need him to move uh, one leg a little more, I can be more specific about that, so it's not that I'm saying don't have tools, you know, have tools for communicating with your horse, but to have a whole, a whole box of stuff that we have to load with our horses, kind of crazy. And, you know, a lot of that, it's all about the preparation, you know. It's all about the preparation. If you're 
think about it, you know, if you're leading your horse around, if in, in a general situation, if he's not leading respectfully, if he's pushing you around or dragging you around or um, any of those things, I wouldn't be taking that horse to the trailer, right? Because in a general situation, he's telling you that you don't really have control of his feet or his emotions, uh, so you're surely not going to have control of his feet or his emotions when you're asking him for a challenging task, right? So as far as preparation goes, I would say our horse needs to be leading mindfully and respectfully with relaxation. To me, that's the biggest thing. You can't expect to take him tense from the paddock or tense from the stall and expect him to just miraculously be relaxed when he gets to the trailer. That's foolish. You'd never think of that. We can't wait on divine intervention to get our horse comfortable with loading in the trailer. We have to create that by design. Uh, and this is, of course, if we're talking about building the skill of loading a horse in the trailer. There are other situations where you just need to load the horse in the trailer, right? Uh, where you don't have maybe the ability to work on his leading or things like that. And, and I'm thinking, you know, think about feral horses that are maybe put into a trailer. Um, you know, maybe you've adopted a Mustang, right, from a holding facility and they get loaded into a trailer, things like that. That's a little bit different, although we want to still think about, you know, allowing relaxation to happen as the horse is getting curious about that trailer. So maybe you've got a whole corral full of horses and you've got to get them loaded in a trailer. It's a lot like working cattle. You've got to get them loaded in a trailer. You try to run them in, you try to rush them, you're going to find out what a foolish idea that was. But if you give them time to think about it and allow kind of curiosity and confidence to build in there, that's going to be the way that you're going to get them loaded into the trailer, um, even without touching them, without, without being connected to them. But so let's go back and think again about those horses that, that are halter broke, those horses that we're leading and that we want to load them, lead them onto the trailer be a good idea for those horses to be able to maybe cross over a tarp or walk through a little confined alley you might set up you know you see some folks sometimes they'll set up a a line of barrels like a little alley made out of 55 gallon drums you know that's a pretty cool idea that that could help a horse to feel a little more confident loading into the trailer if he's not comfortable doing that you know, walking down an alley of barrels or walking down between you and the fence line. If he's not comfortable with that, chances are really good he's not going to be comfortable with loading into the trailer. So that's something to think about. Things like crossing a tarp or, or stepping up over a little bridge or something. That's important too, you know. Uh, I wouldn't say you have to do that. There's certainly plenty of horses that have been loaded without ever having an education like that. But if you can prepare them that way, that can really help the horse also. Um, you know, we've we got to think about with our horses, you know, you see sometimes a horse will want to paw at the trailer or, or go back to the tarp. They'll want to paw at the tarp, things like that. Um, sometimes we see people correcting that behavior as they think of it. But, uh, you know, you've got to think about the, the feet. The horse's hooves are sensory organs, right? They tell him about stability. They tell him about instability. So when that horse... You see it a lot of times the first time a horse steps on a tarp and it shifts and rattles underneath there. He might jump straight up in the air like a Halloween cat. Uh, it might be the same way when he's learning how to cross over a bridge or if you're teaching a horse to step up on the ramp of a horse trailer. If you've got a ramp loading trailer, sometimes the same response happens, right? It's because they, they, they use their feet as a way to sense the world, right? So if there's an instability there, that's going to come out. They're going to notice that. There's going to be a reaction to that. So the more changes of terrain that we can take a horse to in that way, the bridges and the tarps and gravel and grass and things like that, uh, the more helpful that is to loading into the trailer. Uh, you know, we think of the trailer as well, you know, he can just step up in there and walk in there, but when he does, maybe we can step up in there and it feels stable. But the horse has a lot more weight, you know, uh, to him. So when he steps up in there, there's going to be, you know, some give and some feel through the tires of the trailer and things like that. So there's going to be more instability for the horse than there will be for us. just because of the weight difference when we, when we go up into that idea. So we've got to think about preparing him in that way as best we can if we want it to go uh, smoothly and confidently. I get asked questions all the time about, you know, what, what trailer do you prefer? Do you prefer a straight load or a slant load or a stock trailer or a combo trailer or, a, you know, whatever, um, step up or ramp? To me, the, the trailer that I prefer is 
usually the one that's hitched up to the truck <laughs> right I don't I'm not too particular about it I do uh, they've they've done studies on horses where they've set them loose in trailers and um, if they're if they're loose in like a stock trailer idea they've they've set up cameras and watched what happens as they go down the road and all of the horses generally stand at an angle about a 45 degree angle similar to our slant load trailers right but these are horses that are loose about half of them face forward and about half of them face backward when they're going down the road and I would think that that's probably a personal preference for the horse as to how his body is developed as to which end of his body feels stronger maybe I don't know um, but they they've all the tests that I've seen anyway that they've all the horses have decided to stand at an angle like that so that would tell me that a slant load would probably be a little preferred to the horse It'd be easier for him to balance if he's standing a little bit at an angle versus if he's standing straight on but if you have a straight load trailer and that's you know that's what you've got that's what you've got to haul him in well then we can help him to become comfortable in that I'm not one to say that we want to go out there and buy a new trailer just because the horse isn't confident with going into the one we have um, you know I think we can help build his confidence in whatever we have the idea of a ramp trailer versus a step up trailer um, that you know again if we think about the hooves as sensory organs I think a ramp is is alright to help the horse bridge the idea of instability I find young horses foals and yearlings um, it really helps to build their confidence to be walking around on a ramp do I think you need to have a ramp for that no I don't think so I think you can you can load any horse with or without um, some horses get more anxious and less mindful uh, in some situations than in others you know you can come up with scary scenarios of horses that have injured themselves on step ups just as much as on ramps um, so you know I don't think there really is one that's better than the other I think depending on the situation you're in one might be easier than the other you know I've seen some ramp load trailers that man they've got really good supports and springs that you know the tiniest and scrawniest of people can lift those ramps up uh, I can think to mind of one particular client who's ridden with me several times in years past and she's shown up uh, with a ramp that it took three of us to lift the damn ramp once she got her horse loaded into the trailer so in that situation the ramp was was a lot more of a problem for her than, than loading the horse was the horse would load fine it was the struggle with that damn ramp um, so you know in any trailer to me it's about what's easiest for you uh, I've, I've got a friend and student with one that's pretty slick she leads her horse up in and she hits a little button in the front and the butt bar comes up and closes behind him as he goes in that's pretty cool that's a pretty handy deal that one person can operate by themselves that's that's pretty slick uh, so to me it's about your situation and what's easiest for you in that situation uh, but you know then we gotta think about some considerations when we're driving you know, you're not going to be driving your truck and trailer the same way you would be driving your sports car, right? And we see some people, they can't understand why their horse doesn't want to load in the trailer, why he's not comfortable in the trailer, and yet they drive like they're, you know, racing in the Daytona 500, and they come up to a stop sign, and they, you know, might hit the brakes with no more preparation than if they didn't have the trailer on there. If you've ever ridden in the back of a horse trailer, you you would probably not be driving like that you would probably take quite a bit of time to come up to a stop sign or a red light and you'd probably be taking quite a bit of time to pull out again you know I'm not saying crawl out but you'd be a lot more mindful of how smooth you were stopping and starting um, if you've not ridden in the back of a trailer I recommend it carefully though um, you know maybe around a parking lot or a back road or something and you'll feel how challenging it is to stay upright in the trailer uh, for our own balance and you'll probably notice that you start to stand at a bit of an angle when you're in there to help support your balance just like most of the horses in those tests we talked about can stand at an angle so you want to think about that it's constant work for your horse to be balancing when he's in the trailer when you're going down the road constant work um, 
So, you know, it's it's interesting. It's something that I think we all ought to do at some point, um, is take a little drive in the trailer ourselves. It'll probably change the way you look at things. Um, another thing I think is important to consider there, we talk about the horse relaxing in the trailer. Uh, you hear people talk about, well, I'm going to load them in the trailer and we're just going to take a little trip to the end of the driveway and back. We're going to build slow to help him build his confidence. Although what I find with that, I find it to do just the opposite. They might load their horse in the trailer and they go to the end of the driveway. That's just long enough for him to get uncomfortable in the trailer, for him to get anxious about the movement in there. It's not long enough for him to relax, generally. So, again, the psychology, people versus horses, right? For if you were trying to get a person comfortable, you might build up really slow, but I find with horses, in my experiences, the horses that I've loaded that have gone on longer trips, their first ride, that gives them enough time to get comfortable. I had, I had a few horses I purchased years ago, drove out to Iowa, I was living in Pennsylvania at the time, drove out to Iowa in the middle of winter, <clears throat> got stuck in a snowstorm, I think it took about 12 hours, 11 hours to get out to where these horses were, we loaded them in the trailer. They'd never been loaded before, they were young horses. Loaded them in the trailer, and got stuck in a snowstorm on the way back. It was a 12 hour drive out, 11 or 12, and it was about a 24 or 26 hour drive back. It was terrible. Um, the, the road conditions were just awful. There were tractor trailers going sideways. The snow was coming down so bad and it was like we were driving into it or it was stuck on us this storm that we were driving through and it was bad enough to the point where you could see the folks that had pulled over were getting snowed in so I was worried about stopping even so I drove straight through and I thought oh geez these horses aren't going to want to load in the trailer again but you know the reality of what happened is they had enough time in the trailer to get comfortable in the trailer to get really comfortable in the trailer um, and uh, those, <laughs> those horses were the best loading horses after that. Uh, so I think it's important to think about. If you're going to take your horse for a drive to get him used to loading in the trailer, to get him used to traveling, make sure it's long enough for him to get comfortable, not short enough for him to get worried. That's what we want to think about. So uh, we think about problems then, specific problems that we might have loading into the trailer. Um, our horses that rush off. Uh, our horses that maybe they're panicking or anxious inside the trailer. Uh, maybe they load fine, you go to put the butt bar up and they get, they get anxious about that. Maybe you, you go up to the trailer and your horse is already anxious and pulling back and resisting and things like that. In all of those situations, it's really hard for me to give an answer to questions like that over an audio like this, you know. But uh, I think it's about the mindset. We want to really think about where the horse is mentally in those situations. If you're leading him up to the trailer and he's getting anxious, we need to work on that first. It's not a problem in that moment with the trailer as much as it is a problem with anxiety. So we need to help him relax with that. Um, we, we talk about that horse that rushes off the trailer. If he's rushing off the trailer, then we know he's not really comfortable loading in the trailer. Maybe he's going into the trailer because he's been taught to go into the trailer, but that doesn't mean he's comfortable. If he's rushing out, that's telling you how he's thinking about the being in there part. So that's something to really keep in mind. A little sip of coffee here. My coffee's getting cold. I'm doing all this talking. I'm not drinking my coffee. Um, we talk about horses that get anxious inside the trailer. That's something that we see as a challenge a lot of times. A horse will load into the trailer, but then they'll get really fidgety. They'll get really sweaty. They'll get, uh, you know, they're, they're anxious in there. Maybe they're pawing at the trailer uh, from the inside. I think a lot of times that's about that instability of being in the trailer uh, and, and feeling like there's... there's um, not a lot of stability underneath them. You know, they can feel the difference that that's not on solid ground necessarily. So that goes back to the hooves being sensory organs. Um, 
and you know again the the psychology of the horse now he's crammed in this trailer potentially he's by himself that's what we oftentimes will see a horse exhibit those behaviors more when he's by himself in the trailer than he does when he's got someone in there with him when he's got a buddy in there with him uh, that goes down to the psychology of the horse so that's about building his confidence in those moments uh, inside the trailer and the other horses that are anxious in there uh, when it's about stability that's something where we can help those horses to develop that confidence with the instability in a lot of other situations um, again the, the idea of crossing a tarp or standing on a bridge um, if you can if you can get him to stand on a tippy bridge you know that a lot of times is very similar to the sensation that he might have in the trailer so that's a great way to help build that up uh, build up that confidence and I've also experimented uh, quite a bit in the last year or two with the shorefoot pads uh, that my friend Wendy Murdoch has created and uh, she does a lot of teaching about and with these shorefoot pads and they're um, it's like a density foam pad I guess would be the best way for me to describe it um, modeled after the physiotherapy pads uh, that, that are used for humans but they create instability for the horse to allow the horse to get in better connection with his body and, and they help to reset proprioception and things like that uh, I've found that if I work with a horse with those pads they tend to feel more comfortable with the instability in a horse trailer um, so that's that's something really interesting um, it was just an experiment, you know, one day with a, a horse I was working with who would load onto the trailer and then get really anxious in the trailer and want to dance around and then he'd want to fly back out. Um, and then he was resistant to loading again. Started playing a bit with the surefoot pads uh, outside of the trailer, which was a great way to change his association to the trailer, right? Help him become more mindful outside the trailer. And then when I loaded him into the trailer, I, I had him stand on the pads inside the trailer. And pretty much immediately that changed his perspective. Now, it doesn't always work that way for every horse. Um, but I've found that the surefoot pads really help a horse when the challenge is the instability. When the challenge for that horse is the sense of the trailer's instability. I found the surefoot pads to be really helpful. Um, every other situation that I can think of when it comes to challenges loading in the trailer you know we we put him in the trailer he loads fine but as soon as you close the divider he starts getting anxious well that's a claustrophobia thing that's an anxiety thing so that's a horse that needs to spend more time relaxing in the trailer maybe you might load him in the trailer and close the divider halfway right not the whole way which might mean you hang out there inside with him for a little bit but when you start to close that trailer notice or when you start to close the divider rather notice is is he getting tense is his breathing changing? Things like that. You might close the divider halfway and hang out and wait until he relaxes, right? Looking for those neural releases, right? Looking for that shift in his brain and his body from the sympathetic dominant to the parasympathetic dominant state of the nervous system. That's super important. Maybe we've got a horse that loads fine and then you start, you know, wiggling the butt bar. You go to put the butt bar up and he gets anxious and wants to fly out. That would be a horse that I'd probably load in the trailer and hang out and wait for his breathing to relax and for all those you know signs of relaxation to come in there. And then I might just move the butt bar a little. I'm not going to try to put it up. I might move the butt bar a little and wait again for that relaxation to come in. Unfortunately, there's no quick answers right to a situation like this especially whenever we're talking about it over an audio and I'm not there helping you right there with your horse. But when you when you think of things like this, every little resistance, every little issue that we have with our horses when it comes to trailer loading is about them being confident and relaxed when it comes to that. So take our time. If I've got a horse that I'm educating that I want him to load into the trailer, it could be quite a process of building one little plus at a time to help that horse be super confident loading in the trailer. Or maybe he's the type of horse that he's just confident in anyway and you can have one session and the horse is loading in the trailer. The idea is we have to be 
okay with whatever situation that horse presents us with because that's who that horse is as a person he needs a little more help if you were anxious about going into an elevator and I wanted to take you in an elevator right silly idea I guess we could use the stairs but but let's say you needed to you needed to be okay riding in an elevator you go into that elevator and you're anxious and I shut the door well you're gonna panic potentially right depends on your level of anxiety <clears throat> if you get in that elevator and you start dancing around well that, that definitely tells me that you weren't you are not comfortable while you're in there even if you walked in that elevator okay right Maybe in the back of your mind there was anxiety in there, but you wanted to perform nice. You wanted to do the right thing. So you, you allowed me to convince you to go into that trailer. Well, that, <laughs> the trailer, the elevator. And once you got in there, though, you, could, you couldn't handle it. So I'd, if I was trying to do it the right way, I'd let you back out. And then we'd work on that progressively. I'd say, oh, well, you know, maybe staying in isn't the idea. Because we've got to get you confident going in and out. Right? Um, Again, those horses that, that rush back, you know, they might go in because you've made life difficult enough outside of the trailer that they're looking for a right answer. And they decide to, you know, jump ahead. We see horses make poor decisions all the time. Jumping ahead, uh, rushing into a situation. That doesn't mean they're comfortable going into that situation. It just means they're rushing to find the right answer, to get a release of the pressure, to maybe to get away from the handler. But that doesn't mean they're actually okay going into that trailer. So we've got to really take it slow. I had a horse years ago. Um, was backing him out of a trailer. And a car went down the road and blew the horn. Probably talking to one of their other friends or something. I don't know. But a car went down the road, blew the horn. And um, at the exact same time that I was unloading this horse from the trailer, well, he got startled a little bit because the noise inside the trailer of the car horn kind of got amplified inside the trailer. If you've ever been in one and listened to the sound, you know what I mean. Um, so his head came up, and uh, it's just one of those perfect storms, right? His head came up. He bumped his head off the top of the trailer roof. Uh, kind of bump, 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 bump then because he got panicked. Bumped all the way out of the trailer. By damned, it took me about a year to get that horse okay with unloading from the trailer again. Uh, but at the time, I really wasn't as aware of this mental state and the relaxation pieces and things like that. So if I had to do that again, I'm sure it would be um, better, quicker progress. But the idea was I would work that horse to get one step backwards and then lead him forward again back into his regular place in the trailer. And when he could do that, good. Then we went two steps. And you can guess what happened with him. I'd ask for two, that second step, and he'd rush backwards and bang his head the whole way out. Um, so, again, this was many years ago. Um, but, uh, so the idea would be, you know, if we've got a horse that's rushing and anxious to unload from the trailer, maybe you only allow him to stick his nose in the trailer. And then you back him away, stop him, let him lower his head, help him find that relaxation again. And then maybe you get his head and his neck in the trailer and you stop him and you back him away and you let him relax right um, when we stop him we stop him until he was relaxed I, I wouldn't want it to be this go forward go backward go forward go backward go forward go backward like a swing on a playground right there's no opportunity for the horse to relax or get comfortable in a situation like that we've got to make sure that he has the time to relax and to rest, and to let down, and potentially, if necessary, to change back over into the thinking side of his brain. But I would say almost every challenge in our horse, that's going to be the answer that I would give, is allow him to relax. Give him the time. But damn it, i got a show to go to. i got a clinic i got to ride in. i got things i got to do. Well, take a different horse right cancel the show it's worth the time to spend to help that horse get comfortable in the trailer I don't care how long it takes you I've worked with so many horses trailer loading that's that's something I used to be I used to do quite a bit of business trailer loading horses helping horses get over their trailer anxieties and man I would see some ugly ones I had a gal call me 
many years ago, probably 15 years ago now. She said, uh, you know, my horse, when we, when we load her, she bangs her head through the roof of the trailer. It was a, it was a fiberglass roof, so thank God it wasn't a, you know, a steel roof or aluminum roof. But uh, <laughs> she says, my husband said that he's replaced the roof of that trailer five times now. He's not going to replace it again. I need to get this horse top to load <laughs> and to be okay with it. Now, that was a situation. Digging a little deeper, they, uh, that gal was in a restaurant eating on her way home from a horse show. The horse was in the trailer. Everything was fine. The horse was a competitive horse. The horse had been hauled a million times. But the horse got stung by some bees in the trailer. Well, now you can guess that horse has got some negative association to being in that trailer. and It's hard to blame them. You would too. Uh, so that was a process. Slow process. I think we took about a week of working with that horse to make sure that everything was okay and relaxed. Because again, that was association. That's not a learned behavior. That's an association. And it takes much more time to rid the horse of an association. That's why it's important that we keep ourselves in the right state of mind because as soon as you start to get into a fight when it comes to that sort of stuff, you're opening yourself up that the horse is going to assume a fight then every time they get to the trailer. So we've got to be really careful about those things. <clears throat> and that really comes down to it, I think, for us is being ourselves in that open mindset. I've loaded horses lots of times and then I hand the horse over to the owner to load and immediately the owner, because they have the association, right, of that fight, um, the owner tenses up and so of course then they cause a challenge. <laughs> so many times once you get the horse comfortable he'll load in spite of the handler, which is kind of funny but you know you can't help him if, if you're that handler. You can't help him in that situation. We have to learn to be relaxed and to be okay and to be not focused on the task of the trailer, but to be focused on the task of getting the horse relaxed in the trailer. That's super, super important. That's the most important part. If he's relaxed with it, he'll load. It's not a problem. Somebody says, yeah, well, my horse goes in the trailer fine. He loads fine. Every time show day comes, he's a bastard. He's hard for me to load in the trailer. We fight for 20 minutes. Well, if show day's coming around, maybe we're a little more tense. Maybe we're presenting ourselves in a way that's not so good for that horse. And that's setting off red flags for him, right? So we've always got to check back to ourselves. If we're getting anxious about it, we can't expect him to not be anxious about it. Especially when we're the ones supposed to be in the driver's seat, right? We're supposed to be the leader of that operation. Uh, the The slightly dominant partner, right? Or the partner that owns a little more interest in the company. Uh, we can't expect the horse to not be anxious if we're anxious in a spot like that. So, I hope this is helpful to you, uh, to anybody who's listening to this. If you've got a horse that's got issues with trailer loading or if you particularly have an issue with your trailer loading, we've got to really think it comes down to relaxation. When we're first presenting trailer loading to a horse, it's not about the trailer. It's about the way we present it and the relationship that we have and how we present it. Can we keep him relaxed and in a learning frame of mind? If we've got a horse that's already learned negative behaviors, sometimes it is about the trailer. And that's, again, the negative associations that we have to help the horse to work through. So we've got to keep all that in mind. That's, that's super important. It comes down to how we present it, who we are on the inside in those moments that presents it to the horse in those moments. Sometimes it's best to just take a step back, get your wits about you, get your horse's wits about him or her, and try to keep that in mind. So a challenge for you the next time you go to load your horse. Notice his breathing. Notice his eye. Is it tight or is it relaxed? Notice his ears. Are they soft and comfortable or are they rigid? Listen to the way he's moving across the ground as you're getting to the trailer. Is he slowing down? Is he speeding up? Is he keeping an even tempo? To me, any type of hesitation is a challenge or maybe we'll call it a problem with trailer loading. I hear 
people all the time, you know, oh, no, 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 my horse loads fine. It takes about five minutes, and he loads fine. Well, if it's taking five minutes, he's not loading fine. You're working through slight resistances as you go. Maybe he has to pause and hesitate, and he has to think about it, and that's okay, but we need to be aware that that's an open door for a potential issue as we go. So we need to think about that. So the next time you load your horse in the trailer, notice. Notice how he is maybe when you're getting him ready, when you're grooming him, or when you're doing whatever it is you're going to do before you load him in the trailer. Notice the state of his body, his breathing, his ears, his eyes, his nostrils, his chin, his tail, his, his footfall. And notice if that changes or not when you go to load him in the trailer. If it changes, potentially that's telling you you've got a problem underlying, uh, or you have the Again, you have that door open for a potential problem to come up. So I'd want to work on that relaxation. Super, super important. So again, hope you guys have found this helpful. This is a lot of fun. Um, I really enjoy doing these coffee conversations with you guys. I hope you've enjoyed a good cup of coffee or tea or whatever it is you drink when you want to sit down with a friend and have a conversation like this. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed mine. I'm going to finish this cup here as I go. Uh, I'll leave you to your day. I'm going to be doing more of these conversations on a little bit more regular basis. As I live on the road, it's kind of challenging sometimes to keep on a truly regular basis with a lot of these things. But I'm going to try to do at least once a month these coffee conversations. And I'm curious what other topics you might like to hear about can do questions, we can do topic specific things, we can do anything like that. I like these broad topic ideas. It gives me a chance to really talk about a lot of pieces as we go here. So um, in the comments or send us an email or something like that, let me know about some topics you'd like to hear more about during our coffee conversations. I'd really enjoy sitting down with you with a cup of coffee or tea and having a chat. Thanks again guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, I hope you'll tune in next time.